We are so glad that you joined us here on another episode of The Catholic View for Women. My name is Teresa Tamio, along with my lovely co-host, Lena Rodriguez, who is well known to those of you who listen and watch EWTN regularly. She is, of course, a radio host, a TV host, and also she works behind the scenes in production, EWTN catalog. She wears many hats, as we all do in Catholic media. And then, of course, Janet Morana has been on the network for years with Defending Life and also her great work with Silent No More Awareness and the executive director of Priest for Life. Okay, so we've all dealt with struggles with the big C word, as in confession, confession. confession. the sacrament of reconciliation. Yep. Even if we love the Lord and we're trying to do our best, it's still, it's tough sometimes. It's a very humbling thing going to confession, which is actually good because it teaches us humility, but we've all had our issues with it over the years. Well, I can remember when I was in high school, it was uh, the stumbling block of confession that got me to start going away from my faith. And I remember standing online at in the Catholic high school where the, once a month the priest would come and did a mass for us and we had confession. And standing online saying, I, I don't feel comfortable doing this anymore. I'm going to go in and give this laundry list of, you know, forgive me for this and that. And to me, they were like all these little things and why am I like bothering Venial sins, do, but you probably weren't sins. aware of what that, that right. meant. Yeah. And, and just I remember standing there saying, you know what, I'm just not going to do this anymore. And I turned around, went back into the classroom, and the sister said, Confession, Janet? And I went, Yes, sister. Like, you know, sat down even, and lied, of course. Mm -hmm. And then after not going to confession, I started skipping Mass. You know, and, and just one thing led to the other. Before you know it, I was 20 some odd years away from the church, away from my faith. But it was confession, this uncomfortable feeling. And then I can say, is since I've been back to my faith, and actually it's Father Frank Pavone who when he first was ordained, came to my parish. Our spiritual director, our, our spiritual, spiritual advisor producer. for the program. And yeah. he was mm -hmm. the one who got me <laughs> back into to my faith. That was a big uh, step. And did some spiritual direction, which I had never heard of before. And I have to say now that confession still, I'm not easy about it. In other words, I do it because I know my soul needs it, and, and I'm never going to walk away from the faith again. But I can't say I look forward to going to confession. But yet, when I come out, I feel like, oh, so I'm so glad I, I did it. Leave, but yeah. So for anyone else watching, if you still feel uneasy about confession, join the club. Right. I, I don't it's, think there's very many people who go, oh, I can't wait to get to confession. I think it's just some kind of pull on us to, to not want to do it. But I think we all have to admit that how we really need it. it it's, it's like medicine for our soul. You know, it, it would be like not taking your vitamins or something. So we have to do it. And we just got to, you got to really pray. That's what I do. And, and work through that uncomfortable feeling. I mean, I just get uncomfortable every time I'm standing online waiting to go to confession. I, I still do. And um, there's always someone who says things like, well, you know, it's going to be a long time here. You know, maybe you want to come back later and stuff yeah. like that. I'm like, no, that's, that's I think, the, the devil trying what to get me out. Is putting that idea in your head. Right. Exactly. No, you don't go now. To go to don't go you now. Things to do. You're you'll busy. Be, yeah, you'll be much more productive if you come back at a different time and right. then you don't come back. And who do you think is putting that idea in your head? In your head. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't, so, don't let them no. get so you I think I think for this show, we're going to work through some of this, you know, uh, uh, this uncomfortable feeling that many of us get. And so many people, I think, uh, who go to Mass on Sunday don't go to confession. They just don't, they just skip that. You know, they'll still go up and receive communion, and they're just not fully practicing their faith the way they should. And so I think this show is not about saying, eh, 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 you need to be going mm -hmm. to confession, but examining why it's so important. And that what we Scripture do it. says about it, because there, there's a lot of folks who, who fall away from the faith and then are told maybe by someone such as a, uh, an anti-Catholic fundamentalist that there's no basis in scripture and you don't have to confess your sins to a priest, you can just right. confess it to God. Well, sure, but we are confessing it to God because the priest is in persona Christi. That's right. And I had an amazing experience uh, shortly after uh, Deacon Dom and I came back to the church where we we're going to confession. And I, I just felt it was before Easter, so obviously I wanted to go. And I always go to priests. If I can't go to my spiritual director, I try to go to one that I don't know. I, I think that we all kind of have that habit. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a priest that I did not know. I did not recognize him. And I was confessing my sins. And, and you know, most, I think they were all, thank God, at that particular confession, venial at the time. Um, and after I was done, the priest had his eyes closed the whole time, and it was a face-to-face. -face. It was when, you know, right before Easter, where sometimes they bring in extra priests at the churches, and they spread them around, mm -hmm. you can go to individual confession, but weren't in a confessional, so to speak. But after I, you know, um, forgive me, Father, and, and gave my sins, he opened his eyes, and he had the most blue eyes I've ever <laughs> seen. And he looked right at me, and didn't say anything about the sins I had just confessed. And he said, why don't you see yourself? as a loved daughter of the king. Oh my, wow. Mm. And it just, boom, 
right? You know, as my mm -hmm. grandmother, Arrow. you know, Tommy used to say, you need blue cross and blue shield, you know, you got it because it gets right to cut your heart out. It just got to me and I realized it hit me that even though I was back in the church and I had been to confession already and we confessed a lot of mortal sins, for example, my husband and I, as I've said on this show before, we had to confess contracepting and, right. and you know, being away from Which the church and all too. that. <laughs> yeah. And yet I still had not accepted the fact that I was forgiven uh -huh. and I was a loved daughter of Jesus. Right. And he just cut right to the chase. Jeez. And it was so <clears throat> powerful that I, I just felt the presence of God and I went back to the pew and I was just sobbing because I knew that God was speaking to me directly. So we sometimes forget mm -hmm. the, the beauty of the sacrament and that Jesus is there in the priest in persona and Christi. Jesus guarantees forgiveness. Yeah. Right. And if that's not true, then Jesus is a liar because right. he promises and guarantees, goes beyond promising, guarantees forgiveness. Don't, don't you like it when you buy a product and it comes with a one-year guarantee or three-year guarantee? The better the product, the longer the guarantee. Well, this is a guarantee for life from none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. Confession but, guarantees forgiveness. But it's really important. It can affect, uh, you know, our, our, uh, the state of our soul. If, right. if we oh. it purposely ignore confession and say, oh, I'm not going to go, I don't need it, I'm fine, everything's great, you know, I haven't committed any major sins. I think a lot of people, we convince ourselves of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so you really should try to get to confession and not, you say, be overly pious and go every week. But I usually try to go at least once a month, once every six weeks, and I go with my spiritual director and I treat it as not only spiritual direction, but um, as confession as well, and I find that really helpful. Well, coming up, we're going to take a break because we want to spend a lot of time reacting to this very powerful interview that we did with Father Chris Father Alar, Chris. who's an amazing priest from the uh, Marian Helpers, a Marian priest of the Immaculate. And they're based in Stockbridge, where the Divine Mercy is. Mm. But he did such a great job um, of explaining confession and why we should really take this sacrament seriously to remember the gift that is available of Christ in persona Christi, always waiting to forgive us over and over again as long as we have a contrite heart. So he is up next. We're going to take a quick break play the interview for you after that, and then we'll come back with more discussion. So don't go anywhere, and please keep an open mind. If you haven't been to confession for a while, you don't want to miss this interview. Even if you have, it's going to affirm your interest in receiving this beautiful sacrament of reconciliation. We'll be right back on this edition of The Catholic View. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Teresa Tamio, Elena Rodriguez, and of course, Janet Morata with The Catholic View. We're talking about confession, and the title of this episode is Father, Forgive Them, and he does every single time we come to Jesus with a contrite heart during the Sacrament of Reconciliation. He is there to accept and forgive us and love us all over again. And we mentioned before the break some of the issues we've all had with confession. We've all been there, but we just want to remind you to really rethink this whole idea of the importance of confession and to learn a little bit more about it. And with that in mind, we're going to go right to the interview we promised with our friend, Father Chris Alar, very familiar to many of our EWTN radio listeners and TV followers as well, with the Marians of the Immaculate from, of course, Stockbridge, uh, the beautiful Divine Mercy Center there on the East Coast, has a wonderful explanation for all of us on the beauty and the importance of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Let's take a listen. Unfortunately, going into the confessional is something that scares and um, actually petrifies many people. And nothing should be further from the truth. It is in the confessional that we receive the ultimate grace and love of God's mercy. And I think that this is a sacrament that is probably most misunderstood. People believe, well, I don't have to go into a confessional. I can go straight to Jesus and confess my sins. And in one sense, that is true. But yet, we don't have the guarantee that way that we do in the confessional. You see, in the confessional, you are guaranteed forgiveness or Jesus is a liar. And nobody's going to claim Jesus is a liar. You see, how do I know that? Well, open the Bible. Matthew 18, 18, John 20, 21. Jesus says to the apostles, whose sins you forgive are forgiven. Whose sins you retain are retained. In essence, the priest on earth when he declares you forgiven, heaven has to honor that. If he declares your sins are not forgiven, heaven has to honor that. In other words, the priest, despite his own brokenness, 
despite who he is, was given that authority by Jesus. People say, well, the priest doesn't have the power to forgive sins. Of course, it doesn't come from him. But the priest does have the power to forgive sins because it was given to him by Jesus. You see, when you have the ultimate authority, which Jesus did to forgive sins, you have the power to delegate it. So when Jesus had the ultimate power to forgive sins, he gave that power to the priests. And it has been passed on by the laying of hands of ordination called apostolic succession in our Catholic faith for centuries. So when that priest raises his right hand and says, I absolve you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, as I said, you are guaranteed forgiveness. There's no hoping, hoping, am I forgiving? There's no wondering, am I, maybe, am I forgiven? You are guaranteed forgiveness. You see, confession is very special, and it also makes practical sense. We all go to the doctor of the body to heal our ills and aches and pains of our arms, legs, heart, whatever it might be. If that's the case, why is it hard to imagine that we should go to the doctor of the soul? That's the priest. You see, our soul is aching too. You know, people say, well, my body's got to eat, and this is true or we die. It's like Holy Communion, so as our soul has to eat. So you see, our body, we are body and soul. We are not just spirit like the angels, and we are not just body like an animal. We have a rational soul. And so we are body and soul, and we need confession. Now, people say, well, I'm not going to go to that priest because he's not holy. Well, have you ever been to a doctor to be made healthy? And he wasn't necessarily healthy. When I was a kid, I remember my doctor was 300 pounds overweight, smoked, came in with a cigarette, and drank. He was not healthy, but yet he helped me become healthy. This priest, even though you might think he's not completely holy, will help you to become holy by the power of God's grace. Then somebody might say, well, I'm not going to that priest because um, I, he's never been married. And how can he help me to be able to improve my marriage? And the answer to that is, well, did a doctor necessarily have to have had cancer to be able to treat you for cancer? A doctor's trained to treat you for cancer, although he's never had it. The priest is trained to help you in family issues and marriages, although he's never been married. So you see, God knows what he's doing better than we do. If God didn't intend for this to be the way for our forgiveness of sins, he would have said, ask yourself for forgiveness or, or pray privately for forgiveness in the scriptures. He didn't. James, the book of James is one of my favorites. James says, if you want to heal, go to, for anointing, call the priests for the anointing, for the forgiveness of sins. You want the forgiveness of sins? Call the priests. And so in our society today, we've turned away and we don't feel we need to go to this confessional. In essence, yes, we do. You see, if you have a valid confession, and remember there's three parts to a valid confession. One, that we confess all our grave sins that we can remember. Two, that we have some form of contrition. Usually just going into the confessional is enough. And three, we do our penance or our satisfaction. In that case, again, we have guaranteed forgiveness. You know, a lot of people are surprised when I teach that this is how serious a mortal sin is. When we have mortal sin on our soul, we need to go to confession, even before we receive Holy Communion. And hopefully you all remember what a mortal sin entails. It also has to be grave in nature. You have to have knowledge that it's a sin and free will to commit it. If you have knowledge and free will and you commit a grave sin, you need confession. Now, one mortal sin, people are surprised to hear this. If you commit one mortal sin, all the good works you have ever performed in your life and the merit that comes from them. Now, we're not talking works of the law. We're talking works of love, which is what Jesus said we have to have. Non-Catholics confuse that. They believe we Catholics say works, meaning works of the law, like uh, following these legal prescripts. No. When we say works as Catholics, we mean works of love. Book of James again says, faith without works is dead. All right? And then we are not saved by faith alone, but by works of love. Now, if we do that and we commit one mortal sin, 
all those merits that we have done for our entire life, of the good we have done, are gone. They're gone. And we have nothing left to present to our Lord if we die in that state. So please, I beg, you and all your listeners, if you know and are aware of that state of your soul, go to confession. Here's the good news. When you go to confession and you are absolved, all those merits come back. All those graces from your good works, from your whole life, come back to you. You are restored. This is why we call it the sacrament of reconciliation, not just forgiveness. You see, it's God's mercy, and mercy is greater than forgiveness. People think, well, how is that, Father? You see, forgiveness is natural. Mercy is divine. To forgive on a natural level is just to not wish anybody ill, but you can walk away from them and totally not have anything to do with them. Mercy is reconciliation. You bring them back like the prodigal father. Parables called the prodigal son, I call it the prodigal father. Why? Prodigal means to lavish, to spend. And we call the parable the son, the prodigal son, because he spent his money. But in essence, as Vinnie Flynn says, He's the prodigal father because he lavishes mercy and love upon the son. And this is what God does to us in the confessional. He lavishes us with love and mercy, though we do not deserve it. So you see, the confession is the tribunal of God's mercy. It is where we go to be healed, not judged. St. Faustina used to said, it's not only the sacrament of healing, but of education. The priest can help you learn what you need to do different. The priest can assist you in many ways to change your life. And every time you go, grace adds upon grace. Even if you feel, well, I don't need to go because I'm not in mortal sin. And yes, it's true, you don't have to com uh, confess every venial sin because they are forgiven in the mass during the penitential rite. But it's a good habit and it takes humility. So I finish with this. One of the beautiful graces of confession is humility. Nobody wants to sit down and tell another human being all our dirty laundry. But it will grow you in the most important virtue, humility. St. Francis de Sales once said, there are many souls in heaven who committed many sins. There are souls in heaven that did drugs, stole, looked at pornography. But there's not one soul in heaven with the vice of pride. And he said, likewise, there's many souls in heaven, or excuse me, many souls in hell that did many, many good things. There are souls in hell that wrote checks to their parish. There are souls in hell who helped build a local playground. But there's not one soul in hell with the virtue of humility. And in order to go to confession, we build the virtue of humility. And that's the queen virtue the virtue that defeats the queen, king vice of pride. And so let us not be fearful, but rather go into that confessional and say, here I am, Lord. I need your forgiveness and your mercy, and he will give it. Pope Francis said, God never tires of granting forgiveness. We tire of asking for forgiveness. So never tire. Continue to go to that confessional as many times as you have to. We priests have heard it all. We don't judge. But God will give you that grace to do more and more and more virtue and receiving of his mercy if we ask. So God bless you and go to that confessional. God is waiting with loving arms. And so is the priest. Wow, uh, he did such a great job of summarizing the, yes. the sacrament. And I think what really moved me was when he said, you know what, don't be afraid to come to confession. We've precept, we've heard it all. I think that's that right. was comforting, I think, there's, don't you, Elena? There's nothing that's, they're not gonna be shocked and walked out of the confessional because you told them something that really scandalizes them. No, no, they're, they're there right. in persona Christi. It's you are speaking to our Lord Jesus Christ, opening your soul. Well, and the forgiveness and healing that comes from confession. Absolutely. But you know, the other thing that really struck me was when he said that one mortal sin can wipe oh out my goodness, all yeah. the good you've mm. done. So, so many of us have friends and family members who don't go to mass every Sunday. 
intentionally. I don't mean like if you're sick or but you're traveling would, and there's no mass available. Right. right. Yeah. We're talking about people who just say, you know what, I gotta take the kids to soccer and I have to do this. Oh, uh, you know what, we'll just skip mass this Sunday. Well, you just created a mortal sin. Mm -hmm because you're deliberately skipping mass. It's not because no fault of your own. We tell ourselves no big deal, but it, We say no big deal. No, it is a very big deal. But it's a very big deal. First of all, it's part of the commandment, so it is a mortal sin if you deliberately miss mass. And what Father Chris just said, that wipes out all the good, which means you could be a generous person, be contributed to charity, be volunteering. Well, doing... as he was saying, there's plenty of people right. in hell who wrote all these checks, built playgrounds, did all this did all kind of stuff. stuff. Right. And, right. and ignoring just coming to worship the Lord every Sunday deliberately, you're out of the game. I mean, to me, that hit me like, wow, unbelievable. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's 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 a good line to give to your your friends and family members who aren't going to mass on a regular basis. Say, you know what? I hate to tell you, but your 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 whole soul is in jeopardy. You know, because very often people blow off, especially if they go on vacation. Ah, no, you can always get mass. Masstimes.com. You can right. find where yes, you go. Yes. You, know? you don't take a vacation from our Lord no. or from your spiritual. Well, when he said right. that, boy, did that really hit me? Because oh, you know, Teresa and I did, did the it, interview, yes. and I went. But it was a reminder of oh like, oh, 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 well, we better not go there. Spend some time on the resources. We only right. have about three and a half minutes left, and I think this is really important. And we can find actually uh, Father Chris if you'd like more about him. Father Chris Alar, again, we see him every year. He does a beautiful job, of course, with the other priests at the Marians of the Immaculate for the Divine Mercy Sunday Mass mm -hmm. that we carry live. But Marian.org, he's a fabulous speaker. And if you have not heard him speak, invite him to your parish. He's done a lot of missions. Right. He'd be great. So, but we have a number of other resources, JM. If okay, you want to well, here over. we go. This is the homework. Okay, pay attention now. <laughs> Number one, a great resource is a guidebook for confession for ad adults. It's available at the EWTN Religious Catalog, uh, which is EWTNRC.com. Again, it's a guidebook for confession for adults. I highly recommend that. It it's a short little book. It's not a big, complicated thing, and you could be reading through it right before you go to confession uh, every month. Number two is to read Peace of Soul by Archbishop Fulton Sheen, also available at the EWTN Religious Catalog. And the wisdom in that book from Fulton Sheen is amazing. Again, this can help nurture you getting more and more comfortable. Like I just said, I still get you know squeamish and about going to confession. Well, I'm going to get my copy of this book, and I think it's going to really help. Uh, number three is read The Seven Secrets of Confession by Vinnie Flynn, also available at the Religious Catalog, which is EWTNRC.com. And number four, uh, check out Reconciliation and Penance, the Apostolic Exhortation from Pope John Paul II from 1984, and you can get that at the Vatican, uh, www.vatican.va. Number five, of course, go to our website, The Catholic View for Women, where we have more information, sign up for our Elena, and of course, number six, like us on Facebook and spread the word about these programs. But uh, specifically, those those resources of, for confession are, are huge. And I highly recommend just, uh, you know, if you can get them all, do them all, but at least do one or two. And, uh, make and some people, really before we go, we have about a minute left. Some people get, get frightened because they say, I haven't gone to confession, I don't remember. Just tell the priest that when you right. go. You know, forgive me, Father, it's been, you know, in some cases, maybe for some people, I know for you, it was over 20 years. It was over 20 and years. I just, I don't remember the process. Could you kind of walk me through right, it? Sure. This, you know, the, what yeah. matters is your heart, your contrite heart. Going in there and, mm -hmm. and, and being willing to really confess your sins, and especially and when you, if you know you when made you some serious When you go to most churches, mistakes. too, I, I've seen where they have They the have little cards. Cards, right. the acting mm -hmm. they they help you there. Yeah. So you don't have to say, oh, I forget how to say it. And I remember have this it right in front form of you. and then the new form. New form, form right. You know, right. But they have it there. And like you just said, Teresa, the priest will really help you through it. And sometimes it, it can be conversational. Like, you know, I have the old thing, bless me, Father, for I have sinned, you know, back from the old school. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you go in there face to face, the priest will just say, well, how long has it been about? And you just tell and them approximate. Like you know, that keeps the score exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What your mind can remember. Yeah. And one yes. of the things that helps is if every night you do an act of contrition and you do an examination of conscience and you look at yourself for that day, what did what what was good, what do you need to improve for the right. next day? And it helps you train up to preparing for confessions right. when you go for, for confession the next time. too. Well, great discussion. We hope you enjoyed the interview with Father Chris and we hope you enjoyed our program, The Catholic View for Women, and we will see you next time with more from The Catholic View. Have a great day.